Drake Passage generally takes about 48 hours. It can be up to 72, and the worst one I had was six days. But that's extremely exceptional. That's once in 17 years. As we're crossing the Drake, uh, we're leaving the Beagle Channel, you already have a lot of wildlife. You have black-browed albatrosses flying around, a lot of other seabirds. As we head out into the ocean and head towards the Convergence, which is more or less midway across the Drake, and it's when you officially biologically enter into Antarctica, you'll find an enormous variety of seabirds and cetaceans. So we get dolphins further north, and then the bigger whales as we get south. Most of the time the drake is not particularly severe or bad. These days we're, we're very dependent on technology, so we have forecasting systems that we couldn't use in the past. So you can fairly accurately predict what kind of drake you're going to get. If you do have a scenario where you think you're going to get a particularly bad storm, or the conditions are probably too strong for the ship, the guests, or both, then you would not proceed at that moment. Seasickness is something which you can manage very easily these days. There are certain medicines you can take, there are wristbands you can use. I would say that for anyone who does have seasickness, the Drake should not be an impediment for crossing and for going to Antarctica. The rewards far outstrip the short period that you spend on the Drake Passage itself. So if that's your reason for not going, I would say forget about it. Take the medicines and enjoy yourself.